I thought you said, said orc, orc mode. mode. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing, but I know you do. Yeah. I'm just going to ignore that. Orc mode? What? There should be an orc mode, though. They should be here to hear the truth. There is one in Emacs. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. It's Swedish for the horde. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. It is tremendously disturbing. <laughs> yeah, but you know the sad part? Now I can't watch any of those damn movies without watching for it. Yeah. And guess what I bought like three weeks ago? All four movies. All, all the four? next generation. Oh, the next the generation. Movie. Wow, you bought Nemesis? <laughs> you are a hard Why did you buy it? I was able to get all four of them for 22 bucks. Yeah, that's what I found it. Nothing else. No. <laughs> Amazon had like the original series on Blu-ray for a hundred bucks for all three seasons. Yeah, because he knows not to stop the work. Ah. We watched all the first ones and he's like, those are cool. I'm like, all right. So I created a little bit of a thing. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, all right. So Amazon is going on and going off fast for all the next four or three seasons. If have you seen the ARCID Space Telescope Project on Kickstarter? They have a version of that video in Klingon now. <laughs> <laughs> the introductory <laughs> video. You know what? They should have one in Log if they have that. If I remember right, that telescope, that telescope you might want to know. Spots like that. Doesn't need to be much. Right. Costs a lot. Good call. Good call. That's the only sci-fi show you can watch. What? Blake 7. I've never seen it. Blake? Blake 7. Just don't look at it on YouTube. You'll find the last scene. Stay away. Stay away. OK. Well, I don't care about spoilers. Well, come on. It spoils the entire series, the last 30 seconds. That's too bad. I can get it for you if you want. I know somebody who has. Yeah. Uh, welcome to. <laughs> welcome to the July Omaha Linux users group. Did we got there. It's a little meter flashing up there as I talk. Blah 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 blah. That's the Ethernet mic down here at the bottom. One two three. Yeah, it's tapping. It's tapping. Yep. yep. So I have had no time because of this project at work. So, um, oh, by the way, my name is John Larson. I work for the, I work for AIM. <laughs> you know, after many years of saying it the other way, it's really kind of hard to switch. So um, I have not read any news <laughs> or what's going on in the past month. I just found out Fedora 19 came out, so that's that came out today, this morning. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could do use the fed up command and upgrade over this past weekend. But I don't know why they named it that like that. But whatever. Every version it makes it harder to upgrade from the command because it's now only the command line. There is no GUI anymore. Unless you download the disk and kind of upgrade. Yeah, well. Hey, at least as far as I know, the installer is much better than the last one, which was internationally panned. <laughs> you can tell by that face right there. Does it tell you what it's doing to your hard drive? Whoops! It does. You just have to know what you're looking at for. <laughs> tell it like it is. It was 
it's very hard to drill down to see things when they only give you one screen. So, yeah, whatever. I have not installed it yet because I wanted to do a presentation tonight. <laughs> so, not like it's bad, but I don't want to have to deal with those complexities. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I was hoping that uh, I'll mention it in the presentation. So this month, we're going to talk about ZoneMinder. I'd, I'd really hope to do this later this year when I had a bit more time, but um, we've accelerated it to the bank. So how many people are know what ZoneMinder is? It's, it's a security system. It's like closed circuit TV. It's used in both home and commercial applications. It is open source. You can install it in Fedora. You can install it at pretty much any distribution that you like. And it uses pretty much anything as a source. So for instance, where the heck did that go? So like this little camera little webcam can be used as a security system. Can you believe it? Or if you wanted to, you could just use it to bring up a digital telescope out in the middle of nowhere and watch it hook up to the phone. Yes, you could. Yep. So it is a single or multi-zone security camera facility. Useful in home and commercial applications runs under Linux. It does have support for video for Linux. It also does remote access. Um, you can have live or recorded events. You can have it notify you by email if you would like when something happens. Although, as we'll see, that might be very annoying. Um, there are many camera options. Like I said, you have this webcam. You can use IP cameras. You can actually use a TV capture card as a video source. <laughs> so if you plug in, like if you have an old camera and you plug in the RCA plug, you could use that for video. I could output from the camera we're using right here to do the streaming into the system. Yeah, as long as you have the compatible equipment, like the capture card. Um, in fact, they, they link off the ZoneMinder site to a page for their store where they sell four and eight port capture cards. So you can plug in eight cameras into the thing and use the BTTV stuff. You can have all that stuff defined, yeah. When I worked for our previous employer, we had a break in and um, we decided to get a security system. Now we had a few cameras inside the building, which were X10, you know. And um, hey, how's it going, Mike? It's going well, except they can't find it. Oh, this is the first time you've been up here. And I asked three people where the exchange program was, and the first two didn't know. The third guy says you're in it. Right, so the, the camera system that we ordered was a DVR system. So this was about 2005 or four, and it had eight ports on it. So we ordered five cameras, and we used the three that we had internally. It would interface with those three. So we, the, the, the other ones were mounted outside to do around the building, and we just used the ones that we had inside. That was something like 10K for that whole thing. So they just used cat, they used cat5 cables to run their video and power off of their outside <laughs> camera. <laughs> yep. They were Panasonic, which made me happy because I knew Panasonic quality was pretty good on their cameras. 
because we had to do auto iris for the sun, you know, when it moves different times of day. Your camera limit <coughs> depends on the resources of your PC. There is no hard or lower limit, upper or lower limit on the number of cameras you can add in. So you could have a ton if you'd like. I only got four at home, so. So your requirements, obviously you're gonna need a PC running Linux, MySQL, PHP, Apache, a camera, which can be IP or USB webcam, if they do a capture card, and FFmpeg, and this is gonna be important later on. I have to keep remembering these points I keep setting up for myself. Oh, yum, install ZoneMinder. Can you see that? I know. Sorry. It's not very fast today, are we? Now, if I hadn't installed this previously, there would be a lot more dependencies that have to be installed with this. Get Apache started. Okay. So Apache directory, it did create its own file. This is the previous one I had done. Yeah, it was, there were some changes that I did that were spe Fedora specific. And you can kind of see I removed, the, uh, this was indexes over here, and I changed, well, this, I, supposedly the script path you had to change, but I didn't have to, according to the wiki documentation I found. But minus indexes was like the only thing I had to change. For some reason, I don't know why they put that in there, considering that it's part of the, so the person who packaged this probably didn't get it quite right. So it isn't the first time. So I'm just gonna assume we've made the changes. Next, we have to do the database stuff. So we're gonna create our user, our wonderful password, zoneminder1. I'm the one who threw that password in there, so it yeah. didn't, didn't really tell you that part of it. Some, okay. There's some good documentation, there's some other documentation. So some of it is like, set up a MySQL user. Ow. Okay, so we have the user, right? So now we need to add our database. User, share, zone mind, finder, db. Now there's a whole bunch of crap in this folder, but we're only really worried about the top one because they have all the incremental updates if you want to go to 125 if that's, if that's the most recent version. Create. 
databases. There's all of our tables now. Yeah, not everybody does great things, you know. It's really annoying. So I already had my user created, but I'm going to do the uh, privilege grant. So now I have my user. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this stuff. Service sales. Great. This is where the fun part of the, uh, oh, put your password in there. So what do we say, zone minder one? Starting up actually takes quite a while. It's kind of surprising. Yep. So it's all or all Perl files pretty much. The whole back end's Perl. The way it does things. So watch, update, audit, filter, things like that. Let's use a USB webcam. First we're gonna add the Apache user to the video group. So Apache's in there. So we need to do the web page portion now. Um, I have a feeling that when I installed it before, it probably um, added it again as part of the RPM script, which it shouldn't have. It should have just done it. Because technically it was above. So the one down below is what that was added. So all right. Getting here can sometimes be a pain, but that video thing, one, was the, the tough part. So I can add a new monitor, right? Let's just call this laptop one. We're going to say this is a local monitor. The source is going to be dev video zero, because that's what the webcam built in on my machine is. Let's say, oh, 1280 by 720. Now, these being yellow, that's good. If this was red right here, it means it can't even talk to it. That there's an error somewhere in your definition. The, the yellow color is for motion. The um, green color is for motion detect. So the, the colors kind of mean different things in the column. And here's when I was talking about issue with FFmpeg. The libraries are Bork in Fedora 18. Now my Mythbox at home is an older version of Fedora and it doesn't have this issue. So it could be my Myth TV install kind of corrected that. But I'm just showing you how to add, oh look at that, how to add cameras. So let me 
add another camera. So, what will the next one be? Anyone? Sam? That's okay. Hey, got to remember, if you have a spouse, you have to have certain things like the wife acceptance factor or ease of recognition. So, video one. And I'm going to say 640, 40. I have no idea what the actual size of that one is, which means it's red because it doesn't like it. Device format. Let's say NTSC. Use the JPEG color palette. Does this make any difference? Nope. So even if you try to look at it, it's not going to work. You're going to get garbage. Mm -hmm. So. That is, this camera is not on another system, and it's not an IT camera. So it's just the local camera since we're in dev video one. We're using the monitor function. There is other functions. We'll get into that in a moment. <coughs> We did the source tab, the device path, format, capture palette, and you can set the width and height, right? There is an alternative method to this that does work out to be somewhat easier in my opinion, and that is using the motion program. How many people have heard of the motion program? Very good. So motion was essentially designed to do just what ZoneMinder does, but just a single camera. Well, I think you can do more, but it's usually pretty easy. Let's look at an uh, example of motion. So this is the motion config for the one of my webcams at home. And I had to do pretty specific on my uh, width and height. The one thing I've noticed with ZoneMinder, if you don't match this with the ZoneMinder config, you'll get red. And it just, it just doesn't like it. Or you might get a blue screen for your camera feed. They just have to match. Otherwise, it just doesn't work at all. So I have changed the frame rate to 10 because I'm kind of messing with this, right? So you can have minimum frame rate. There are some settings for, here's the device path, video zero. Let's see, what am I on, 80, 84? This is the webcam service. This is essentially its own HTTP server built into the pro motion program. I can set my quality, the port it listens on, and then there's also a control port. So essentially, this guy is just feeding video all the time on that port. So it's been running for quite a while. And you'll notice it does take some CPU to run. A lot. 92%. Um, not really. single core. But it's a firewall. I mean, it doesn't need to do much, right? That's the gateway in my house. So that's the alternative method. 
I find that is much easier to mess with than the, the permissions locally on the box to get all that stuff to work. Even, even if the camera is local on the box that's running ZoneMinder, I use motion to control it, to take care of it, because it's just so much easier. The different modes, we've got just motion. Modec, which is for motion detect. Record, which is a continuous record, so you better have a lot of disk space for that. Yeah. And MoCord, continuous record with highlighted motion detection. I've never used that mode, nor have I used the record mode. I don't want to have to sit there and deal with all that stuff. Events are for motion detection. So I don't have any events in this one that we just built. But if we look at the mine from home, this is the, uh, this is the live feed from the front of the house right now. We can scale this down. And it has a list of events that occurred with date and times. A nice little bird right there. We can see the number of events in this column. So if I wanted to, 1753, there was motion detected. And the way it does motion detection is changes in pixels. So driving home, going in the garage. That's what it did. Well, to notice, it started when the car was over here, right? It started replaying from that moment in time. But that's not how I have it defined. There's the zone section that you zone out what you want to monitor. So any changes in this red, these red areas, that is what it will record. Since the car tripped this, it backed up several frames and started to capture ahead of time, just so that it knows. When cars come up the street and they turn and go down the street, I usually always get a, an event record, right? If they come up the street from this direction towards the stop sign, I get about a little bit of time where you don't even see anything. And then you see the car drive through. <laughs> Only because it rewinds those frames. I've seen birds fly through and trip it off. And they're only in one frame, but it's enough to trip it off, <laughs> right? So you set your you can set these zones. So like 10 seconds, five uh, I think you can. I, it's in the config. I have recently changed the number of frames to capture, so but it doesn't seem to be doing much difference to me on the display. So like this is last night. These are the two zones. I think so. Yeah. So this is the definition area. I have this one selected. You can just sort of do. You grab the dot and you kind of just sort of move it around. This is not really a, a thing you want for a, a PTZ camera. Um, point tilt, pan tilt zoom, right? So because it's knowing what the pixels are, if you keep moving it, it's going to register motion and start recording. Because usually the motion control of a camera is an interface to zone mind. Some cameras are smart enough to do all this by themselves, but ZoneMinder is doing the work for me. It's got the software, it'll take care of it, et cetera, et cetera. So from, there is some percentages, see, preset, fast, low, high sensitivity. You can modify these zones. So like you can have high sensitivity for here and low sensitivity for here. So if somebody walks down the sidewalk, I'm probably going to get them more than somebody whose car is pulled through here. If I move that camera, I'm screwed with my zone. <laughs> if it falls off the, uh, the tape that I have against the window. I just threw this together as part of this presentation thing. So It's just fun to have, you know? OK, so that's those zones. 
that is left over from the roof that got replaced last week. There's some in April. In April, yeah. This is actually a pad of shingles. They still have to come and get. Mm -hmm. So this this camera live. This is an old Logitech ball camera. This is like a, uh, a 5,000, 5,500 or 550 or something like that. This is probably about six or seven years old. No, it's just an effect of the camera. Now this guy, this is a newer camera. This is a 525. The quality is much higher on this. This is an eight. This is a 720 webcam. Funny thing is, is that um, I found out I have a rabbit in the yard. It's tripped it off. <laughs> no, if somebody walks through the yard, you can essentially see them, but it doesn't work in practice because you only get like from here up. It's not a very good place to put it. Ideally, I want an outside camera mounted on the shed that looks at the back of the house. But for that, I need like power, I don't, and or I'll rig up some kind of solar panel with a battery pack, kind of a thing. There is these alarm modes here. I really haven't messed with them yet. I really should. But if I look at this event, it's gonna replay the event. What triggered off the motion detection? Here comes the clouds. That much of a change will trigger it. That's an, anno that's an annoyance, yeah. You know, it doesn't, it's slow enough in the front camera that it's never tripped it off. Because there's a tree that gradually grows across the driveway at night and it's never tripped it. Cloud cover, though, will trip it all the time. Leaves too, yep. Yep. And rabbit. And the rabbit is funny, I should have kept it. The rabbit was staring right at the camera at the base of this frame. It was just sort of like. And then you didn't use that? No. Shame on you. So the thing about the events, too, is. Um, I look at a specific event, this is tonight. You can scale it. We already seen that. There is a way to archive events, so you can save them. There is a way to, um, here's archive. You can, let's see if I go into here, if I click this, there is an export function. Or you can export to a tar or a zip. So like you can almost give it to law enforcement if you want. That's kind of cool. You know, um, motion JPEG. It kind of depends on the source. I mean, it's using FFmpeg in the back end, so. Yeah. So, so far you've seen two webcams. What about a FOSS cam. Has anybody heard of a FOSS cam? I showed a picture of that, didn't I? Yep. So it pretty much looks like that. And you can kind of pull up the live feed. Yeah. But when you read the wiki, it tells me 15 frames a second, you can download a Perl module for this camera, the control file. So it, when you go into um, the options, there's a section on enabling control right here, support controllable cameras. So Surprise the wife here, we'll press control. We can tilt up. We can tilt down. Left. Yep, that. And this is another fun thing. Um, you see where it says sleep and wake? Wake turns on the infrared LEDs on the front of the camera. Sleep turns them off. 
So if the room is dark, it'll light it up and you can see everything in the room. Yeah, this was 65 bucks. If you want a stationary one that doesn't have PTZ, this doesn't have Zoom, but um, it's like 50 bucks. But as you saw with a webcam, it's just as easy to do it. I mean, I have enough machines around the house anyway to do it. But yeah, I mean, it's awesome. IPv6? Not this one, right? So, um, there's their outdoor. 15 to 20 meter night vision. There is a 30 meter version of this too. They're, they're about like this big. If you look at it, you'll kind of see a red glow from the infrared, but it's like the same innards. Some of the newer versions of their cameras, like the, the, uh, the what they call their HD cameras, they're a little bit harder to configure because the, the whole server setup is different on them. Chad here at AIM, he's got those. And it's a, you have to set up FFmpeg streaming and he can't get it to work in anything but IE. It's like, it's a freaking Linux box. But yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot of LEDs. And I believe you can change the lens out too on some of these. So you get a different pattern. So there's someone's example at night with the infrared. And it's wireless. I mean, if you, if you assign an IP to it and it connects to your network, you can hit it all the time using what, uh, the hardware assignment. There's a montage mode where it'll show like all sorts of stuff at the same time. You can change the layout, too wide. Obviously you can really see the difference in the quality between these two. Right now it's set for low bandwidth. I can actually change this for high bandwidth. I don't know if it makes much of a difference. Nope. Well, four, five, six. So it's keeping up in time, in the number of seconds. The wind's not blowing, so you're not seeing anything move. See the trees aren't blowing. But this is part of the frame, so the time clock is part of the image. Oh, there you go. Wonder if I have any night events. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have LEDs on your cameras, you probably want to cover them up with something because they'll reflect off glass and kind of shine back at you. It is annoying. Yeah, I put a bunch of painter's tape on the one I have in the front yard and you can still see it. So I need to borrow some touch up paint and go over it. Some people just open them up and snip off the, the LEDs. But exciting. Show that, show that. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the one I'll get for the back of the house. Hey. So is there isometric or something? Oh, yeah. Well, three a day. Well, here, here's an example. They've got, you know, Ethernet, reset button, which means you better hide it because somebody could boop. Um, this is a power plug. So. I wonder if it is PoE if it's doing that. Because it's part of the same, that just might be a combined cable. So that's eight inches long. There's your wall wart. Yeah. 
So that, that camera that I've got, the FOSS cam, it does have audio in and out. But I haven't seen a way to work it through this, you know, to show you. It's sitting on the same box as my Mythbox. But you didn't put it in the sit-on binder? No, I have not put that on there. No, I should. For me, in the last month, it's just been something to play with. It's been great to know what the trash has been picked up. Today, I was able to watch the cat. Well, the cat, I think, went to the vet tonight, so we were trying to make sure that she was getting around OK. That's, That's a lot, a lot of, cameras, of cameras, this guy. That's 11 cameras. Where would you put one, Craig, if you had one? Is that more than one pile? So yes, you could do something like that. Yeah, the, the, the program that we've been talking about, ZoneMinder, it, it just, no, that's okay. Yeah, you define, you essentially, you define these cameras. So like source, HTTP, it's simple. The port, the IP, and then there's a script that you put in for remote control and stuff. Because you can put IP, you can put uh, IDs and passwords on the cameras, on the remote ones. So unless they have it, they can't see it. And it depends upon the manufacturer, but you can pass that, obviously, as part of that path I'm passing oh so wonderful visitor visitor is the passwords. So do they have a hardware compatibility limit on cameras or uh, uh, pretty much any camera? Yeah they, they do. They do. do. Like at last time. Yeah. But I mean if if you've got a UVC webcam, you're pretty much guaranteed it's gonna work through video for Linux. Or motion. I mean just doing motion it I originally started this whole project out of just messing with motion. And I messed with that for about a month, which is a, a daemon that runs. It's all text-based. And then I went to ZoneMinder and just kind of stepped it up from there. I'm just like, OK, oh, I can use motion to port all my video out over the network, which would save me time configuring remote cameras. Because I thought I'm going to have to buy four or five FOSS cams and do all this crap with them. And it's just like. The motion and webcam stuff is so much easier than FOSCAM. But I have to have a computer running, plugged in, and you're not going to be able to do this with a Raspberry Pi. It is not powerful enough. It would kill it. So even though those FOSCAMs are like embedded Linux boxes, they're specific to that. And they do get warm. Um, that interior one that we had up there, there's a number 20 screw on the bottom, so you could actually mount it. See, like the store normal threads. You can mount that to anything. So this model, this is the one that Chad got. This actually has an SD card slot on the back as a backup. So if it loses, you can, it'll still record based upon its own motion detection if your main system goes down. I, I can't zoom in on that, unfortunately. Really? And most of these cameras actually all come with free DDNS. <laughs> I turn that off. Along with UTNP. <coughs> yeah. I don't need stuff broadcasting out to the world. Uh, do you even have SIM cards? No, I've not seen any that have SIM cards. Yeah. 
So here's their $55 cheap drop cam type. That would be great for the garage, you know. I recently put a uh, motion sensor switch so the garage lights turn on. When we get home, the door opens up, sees it, starts, turns the lights on. Every time you walk into the garage, you're not doing this, trying to find the switch in the dark. And that would be perfect for that, because as soon as the field trips the light switch, boom, the camera will have full color. But notice, 640 by 480. That's why it's so cheap. Well, it depends. How, how well do you want to see their face? Right? I mean, you could submit it to the authorities for insurance, too. Micro. Oh. But I mean, if you've, got, if you've already got a system built and you're trying to use it remotely, you could probably put a cellular modem card or something on the system with ZoneMinder. And it can, because it'll email out notifications. I believe it'll attach a still picture too, if I remember correctly. Come on. Should zone miner send you message with details? Alarm detected, store, email body. Yeah, that's why I have it turned to frickin' off. How many frickin' things you get from the, just the clouds going over. Oh, you got another message. Well, that's, boy who cried wolf. Present company excluded, did it. That's difficult. That's really difficult. So there's there's the full sun hitting it right here. Then you, it'll get covered over with a cloud probably in a second. Yeah. So you kind of get the idea. You kind of get into this mode of how do I mount the camera so that it's not getting this full bleed and the sun's the back of it. I don't really have much else to say. You guys got any questions? Um, post fix. Maybe you should look at my config. You're doing weird stuff though that I'm not doing. Yeah, I try, I try and send email through PostFix, right? I try and use it to send mail. Nothing. Smart relay? Is it, what about the, you have smart relay turned on? Oh, you said Linode? Oh, Maria GB. So oh, in the user file? Yeah. Uh, is that with the old password thing or specifically all the new passwords? Because some people still have that old passwords equals one in the my.
Aaron, are you speaking next month? Uh, no. Okay, I just wanted to confirm. I unfortunately will not be here next month. I will be out in western Nebraska. Hopefully not in 110 degree heat like last year. Really? Oh. That's brutal. I don't think anybody's done fuse for a long, long time. So if I go out and get a, a Chromebook tonight, which one, Samsung or the Acer? The Pixel? I don't have 1500 bucks. Oh, they no longer have the hard drive. Trying to look to something lightweight for traveling rather than a full laptop, you know. <coughs> See, I've already got a tablet, I could do that. How many people are going to make zone minders since I already showed it to you? If they're all remote cameras, it shouldn't be any problem. That should be cool, actually. So you're using that one already? It's a one long documentation here. Do you know what they're called? What? The, the type of camera? How to check a camera is working. How to set up H.264 streaming. How to set up H.264 streaming with FFmpeg monitor and a Magic Wave Systems license plate camera. So that's like the camera that mounts in the back of your car. Yeah. How to set up a Fleur F-Series thermal camera. Yeah, there's a lot. Check out, check out their facts and stuff like that because it's got a lot of stuff in it. There's the hardware compatibility list. Okay. Here's your full compatibility cameras. I don't see Samsung. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a camera that works without the 
Oh, I didn't know TP-Link made cameras. S E G Victor. One hundred. One zero zero five R. Yeah, you could you could skim it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. So one thing you'll notice too when it's when you actually got stuff running. And this one doesn't have the light on because I didn't restart the minder. Is that the lights will come on on the cameras when you're doing it? It's off. I said it does take a bit. That one's on. No. Nope. Uh, the longest you can get used functionally is about 15 feet. But. Yes. But then you start to have issues with distance because of light speed and stuff like that. You get dilation. And one of these that I'm using upstairs on a webcam for our staff meeting. That gives me a good distance away from the computer. No. no. Because you'll have problems with dropping frames in webcam. If you look at the 32, they usually will say, not for webcams, not for use with video cameras. You can do speakers and printers and scanners, you know. I mean, in an ideal world, we would be using FireWire video cameras, but I had to say it. You know I did. <laughs> hey, it, FireWire was made for video. And the greatest analogy I give of FireWire versus USB is its difference between IDE and SCSI. It has a dedicated processor just for processing the requests. It takes the load off the CPU. FireWire was designed for that because it was a host-based architecture, just like SCSI. Hey, you know, they still show up as a div video device. Oh, the PlayStation? Oh, some of the early PlayStation cameras were FireWire. Or I, as they call it. 
I'm s I didn't hear what you just said, sorry. Oh, I was just looking for a regular firewall to be able to run, like a media one. It would be impossible. Yeah. I mean, Angular, like, no one would know where it is. Uh, so, like, we have one that uh, had a uh, radio shack that was 30 bucks. Oh, boy, do I have a bunch of those, too. I know, I got a bunch now, but I didn't really have one. Did you go to Mono Price? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Buying cables is in town is how the companies make their money. You know, you go to Best Buy and you buy a $50 printer and a $25 USB cable, they're making more money off the USB cable than the printer. When we, when I, when we had CompUSA in town, we had a business account and we needed to buy some cables and they gave us 10% above cost. They say, oh, I need this 25 foot uh, parallel cable for this printer. Oh, okay, $1.55. I was just sort of like, what? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Let the let the people bear. Yeah. They wouldn't let us buy any cables after that. Village point. Yeah. The monster cable. I have had two bad uh, HDMI cables come out of them. Did they, didn't they replace them? Yeah, I either get stuff from Monoprice or Amazon. Amazon Basics is actually pretty good for price. The fact that they actually have batteries now from Amazon. You can buy a battery from Amazon, yeah. What was it, Easy N? That's R2D2. Oh, I didn't want it. I submitted the thing. When they saw that it got picked up by UPS, they processed my request. And I realized they had my credit card. And it, they didn't give it to me back in the box. They said a recharge. Not the Dragon Ball Z character. Yes. Well, I will not be here again next month. Uh, I'm catching a plane in the morning, so I can't stick around tonight after the meeting. Sorry. I'm going to California for Anime Expo. Yeah. Anime Expo. Me and 130,000 of my closest friends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, uh, let's see, we started in 95. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Thank you. Thanks. Yay, clap, clap, clap.